What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be back to work on the Corvette C8. As you guys see in the previous episode, we went ahead and did all the body work. We also installed some new parts and while we were doing all that, a lot of new parts came in, such as the rims right behind. And then we also went ahead and picked up a new bumper for the front and the rear bumper came in. The front bumper had a little bit of damage, but we got it all primed out. And now it's time to go ahead and start sanding everything on this car to get it ready for paint. As you can see, this rear tailgate had a little bit of damage on it. We got it all primed out. We went ahead and threw a little bit of guide coat on there just to see exactly where we're sanding and exactly where we're not. And then over here, we do have the rear bumper, which finally came in from the dealer. This thing took freaking forever, like two weeks, I think, something like that. And then we have our side skirt rocker right there. So let's go ahead and get the sanding. The first thing we're gonna do is, I think we do need to go ahead and take this plastic piece off right here. I think it just comes off with the glass just so we won't have to tape it and we won't risk getting any paint on it. So let's go ahead and try to disassemble everything we can on this rear tailgate. So we got the trunk mostly stripped down. We went ahead and took off these side vents. Unfortunately, you can't get this off right here without removing this glass. And that's just something we don't really wanna mess with. So what we're gonna do is just tape all this off perfectly right there so we don't sand it and so it doesn't get any paint on it. And we did actually have to remove some of the glue that was on from like a uh, protection cover that was on the car, but it is pretty much ready to go ahead and start getting blocked out. So let's get straight to it. So Jake went ahead and replaced the control arm and this is the old control arm right here. This thing was all broken up right there. It kind of just popped out of the ball joint right there. So no big deal. Simply got it replaced with another OEM one. And now what we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and get some tires mounted on our rims. As you guys know, Tony shipped us a full set of wheels with only 300 miles on them. And we need to go ahead and get the tires ripped off the original ones. And then we also went ahead and ordered some new tires right here. Well, these aren't new, these are used tires but they're in pretty much new shape. I mean, usually if you're buying tires, you know, you just buy the same ones you have on there. And then later we'll probably get a whole set of aftermarket rims for this Corvette. You know, maybe some Apex racing rims. We've been actually looking into them and they look really cool in these Corvettes. I think what we're gonna do right now is go ahead and grab these tires, grab all our rims and head over to the tire shop and get everything mounted on. So we got both tires. Uh, Jake put like two rims in his Audi and then I put like three rims in my BMW. 
I gotta say, this Audi is a much bigger car. That car right there is tiny, but we got everything in there, and now we're gonna head to Good To Go Tire and get all these tires mounted so we can get this Corvette back on the road. So we are heading to the tire shop right now, and unfortunately, we did get a little check engine light on the BMW, but we will be able to scan it with the keys, a Wi-Fi adapter, but man, I gotta say, this car right here is probably the funnest car I've ever owned. It's just so perfect. It just hugs to the ground, especially in cornering and stuff like that. And honestly, it has enough power for what it is. You know, a little V6 or inline six uh, turbocharged. I think especially with that tune really opens it up. But we're gonna head to get to go and we'll catch you guys there. So we made it to good to go tire. They are kind of slammed right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop off all the rims and hopefully they can get them all installed pretty quick. And then we'll be back to pick them up to get them back on the car. Hey, we only want a little bit of curb rash on the front ones, and that's it. Is that good? Just that a little bit, you know. We'll get you some steak tacos later. No, that's what you said last time. <laughs> what do you mean? Come on, you, you can't say that kind of stuff on camera. <laughs> right, you, say, hey. you say that in front of the camera the other day. Hey, where's, your, where's your And my amigo say, go. oh, he bought you lunch. And you did it. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll buy you two days lunch today. We need these done two as days fast today. as possible. My lunch today and tomorrow? Yeah. But we need these done in about 30 seconds. Nah. Okay, only one day lunch. What time is your lunch at? Right now? All right, let's go. All right, you go get it. Let's go get lunch. What'd you, okay, let me, what do you need to get done? All right, so we need this tire to go on there. Okay. This sense, or I think this tire is bad, yeah? No, I think it's oh, no, I think this one's full. Right. Yeah, this one's flat. Oh, yeah, that one's so we need these sensors right here put on the rims. And then this tire is bad, so we need to see if we can find a tire like this. Where are you going to find it? You got one over here? No. Maybe. It's a uh, two. That Mexican place out there? Yeah. What do you like to order there? Tacos. How much tacos? Three. 225.45. I mean, really, any 19 that's kind of sent right there. 235. 35, that'll work. So we're here at the Gala Giro restaurant. We gotta get one some tacos because I kind of promised him already like twice I was gonna get him lunch. And we're gonna get him a couple of tacos and hopefully we'll have some of our rims done. Thank you, man. Are our tires done? Yeah. This boy works quick when you get him tacos. Well, anyway, our tires are installed. Oh, they're right here, actually. Dang, look at those suckers. They look good. Those rims aren't bad. Oh, that's just glue. That's just glue, yeah. All yeah. right, oh, looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and load up these tires and head back to our shop. So we made it back from the tire shop. All our tires are nice and mounted and balanced. And we did actually have to pick up a uh, used tire right there because I guess we just didn't realize that one of the tires in the front had a big old gash in it too. You can see right there, we kind of just overlooked that, but that's okay because we'll probably be getting a full set of brand tires here soon in the future. But before we install all these rims and tires, we will have to add a little bit of transmission fluid to this car. Because as you guys know, when axles pop out, they usually leak out a bunch of fluid. And we have uh, two quarts right here of some Ace Delico transmission fluid. And it's pretty simple to add. I was actually watching some YouTube videos and a lot of people actually add two extra quarts to their factory transmission. And I think we're just gonna add probably two quarts 
and then maybe add a little bit more because I think maybe a quart leaked out. What do you think? Probably about a quart? Yeah, about a quart. Yeah, because I mean the axle was just off and we actually leaked out some whenever we were taking it off the trailer and I'm sure during the accident a little bit leaked off. But there is a uh, fill plug on the driver's side. All we have to do is remove this wheel and we can access it and then we did get a pump and we do have a little setup right here so we can just pump all that fluid into there because these dual clutch transmissions you definitely want to make sure there's fluid in there so you don't burn up any of the clutches because they are expensive so let's go ahead and pop off this driver's side wheel right here and pump some fluid in here and then we can put these wheels on and maybe drive this car a little bit So we got the wheel off and there should be a little fill plug right down in there. I'm not sure what side it's gonna be on. Hold on. So you can see right there very, very slightly, there is a drain or a fill plug right here. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew that and fill this sucker up with some fluid. So Jay got a 17 wrench and hopefully we can just slide up in there and get that fill plug unscrewed. And I'm pretty sure you just fill it up till it starts leaking out a little bit. But the guys that do overfill theirs by two quarts, I guess that's like if you're gonna hit the track or something, they kind of lean the car over so you can fill more in. And I know there's a drain plug or there's a fill plug on the top too, but you do have to take off the air box and a lot of other stuff like that. So we're just gonna do it this way. I think it's a little bit simpler. You get it off? Yeah. Any fluid coming out? I'm about to see. Oh, we need to grab a level and make sure this car is sitting perfectly level. Yeah. I'm just gonna eyeball it though. Yeah, it'd be fine. You get it off? Yep, no food coming out. All right, now let's get our nice little handy dandy contraption right here and see if we can put it in there. You get me pumping? Uh huh. I'm pretty good at this. Yeah, I think you probably put two quarts in there. And this pump works pretty good. I didn't think it would pump that good. Oh, we need to add the extender on here. The extender is for extensions. Wait, I wonder if you have to have the car warmed up though. Yeah, you want to have it at operating temp. Well, I think we'll put two quarts in. Yeah, two quarts. Do that, because I don't think there's a way to actually overflow. No, if it's, if it's, yeah, if it's not overflowing, we don't have to warm it up. So we got all the transmission fluid installed in the car and hopefully two quarts is enough. Maybe we'll add a little bit more and we do just need to do a little bit more research on these Corvettes. You know, these cars, I mean, they came out like two years ago. So there's a lot of videos on how to add it. And a lot of people were just saying, you know, if you're going to track the car, make sure you add two quarts of fluid to that transmission. I mean, we're not going to be tracking this car at all. Maybe Jake will be tracking it through the mountains. But who knows but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install the new rims right here we got them all nice and mounted and balanced and all it costed us was six tacos from the greatest mexican cuisine in the world but anyways let's go ahead and slap all these rims on uh get this car lowered down on the ground and see if this thing will drive don't be doing no pranking doesn't all them muscles but couldn't get it on there. the ground and i gotta say it looks pretty crazy without all the body panels on and we also slapped on all of the new wheels that we got from tony big shout out to him man he hooked us up because right now we wouldn't have been able to get this car on the ground and i gotta say these rims look really good especially with the little lip around it goes on the white jake what do you have to say about that Dude, i love them man they look sick oh yeah and then like in the future if we do get some aftermarket rims you can always have these for a spare because it's always good to have a spare set of rims and now we're gonna go ahead and uh and now we're gonna go ahead and dive deep inside the car, which we have to reinstall these red seats. Man, I gotta say those things look good. They were kind of just chilling in the office. And then we do have a pretty special box right there from Safety Restore. If you guys don't know what Safety Restore is, basically a company where you can send in your seatbelts and they can rebuild any seatbelt, any module for pretty much any car. And one of the coolest things they do offer is they can do custom webbing on any seat belt that you have. So you can do like custom colors, custom stitching, 
and a bunch of stuff like that. But definitely check out Safety Restore down below. I'll drop their link. So if you're trying to get some custom seatbelts in your car, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than OEM. Okay, now let's dive right into it. Let's go ahead and cut this box open and see our seatbelts. We were kind of thinking about doing a different color, but honestly, with the red seats, I don't think red seat belts would have looked too good in there. Probably would have just been too much. And there they are. Oh yeah, they do an amazing job. Package everything up. Just... Oh yeah. I think that's the driver one. And this is the passenger one. So let's go ahead and get these bad boys reinstalled in the car. And then we can also put in the seats because they do bolt on to the side of the seat right there. And you kind of got to take it apart. So let's go ahead and get these things in here and get it knocked out. So we went ahead and reinstalled the airbag module and I gotta say on these Corvettes it's probably one of the easiest airbag modules I've ever installed in my life. Nothing too complicated, everything's really simple. Now we're gonna move on to installing these seat belts. They first have to be bolted onto the seat and then we can go ahead and put the seats in the car and they just sit up here right in the back and then all these plastic pieces just clip all together. So let's go ahead and reinstall the seat belts onto the seats and get these bad boys back in the car. that the entire interior is all back together and this piece right here we didn't fully clip it back on because it does actually go under the rocker panel it has little clips right there clips onto the rocker panel but man check that out safety restore did an awesome job on the seat belts both of them work we also went ahead and reinstalled the airbag module in there super nice and it will need, definitely need a, a detail once it's all complete but we kind of just wiped it all down got as much as glass as we possibly could and we did figure out why the windshield was really sticky and that is because i'm guessing this guy had window tint on the entire windshield because if you see it on that window right there it is super dark and i guess we just never noticed it because it was always down and same thing with the back and i think he did peel it all the way off because the entire windshield is super sticky in every in every spot it is really sticky so whenever he probably got in an accident he was probably driving at night and he just ripped that off so the insurance company wouldn't see it so we're kind of exposing him but that's okay that's why you don't really tint your windshields too dark you know no. like if you want to tint it just barely tint it up you know just to give it that little dark glare but don't overdo it like even that even that driver door is like really dark dude like I don't know, you'd have to roll down your window just to see. It's kinda, it kind of amazes me how some people would just tint their windows super dark. Kind of just ruins your uh, driving experience unless you're hiding from somebody. But anyways, guys, this car is coming along nicely. Well, unfortunately, it did start raining, so we can't really take this thing for a test drive, but that's okay because in the next episode, we will be taking this car to get it painted. Unfortunately, uh, the paint booth is a little bit busy right now, so we're gonna have to wait all the way until next week before we can get all these panels in there. And the cool thing is this is a solid white, so we're not even gonna have to paint the hood or like that door over there or the quarter panel because this paint is gonna match. You can tell it's literally just, it's kind of like the BMW Alpine white. It's just a solid white, but I think it honestly looks really good. And we won't have to take this car to the paint booth because as you can see, all the parts pretty much just unbolt off this car while the rocker panel glues on. But since we have a new one, we're just gonna take everything over there instead of bringing the entire car to the paint booth. And it's gonna be a lot easier. We'll be able to lay the doors flat, get a nice uh, clear coat on there. But man, look how much parts we have 
everywhere just laying here got the bumper everything is going to get painted in white and i just can't wait to see this thing fully assembled this part right here might be a little bit tricky uh getting it back on the car because we're gonna have to get some urethane glue and some panel bond just to get it set perfectly on there and get all the gaps right but anyways if y'all enjoyed this video go ahead and hit that subscribe button also follow us on instagram at vtune with all that being said i just want to thank all of you guys for watching all these videos bye